I have chosen today's topic, and it is a very important topic for the examination purpose as well as in hospital practices when a doctor or a student has to see the x rays of the fractured neck of the femur. So, how to describe an x ray of fractured neck of the femur if asked in examination? So, let us start understanding a little of the anatomy. The femoral neck fractures are a subset of the proximal femoral fractures. And remember, the femoral neck is the weakest part in the whole of the femur. Now, what are the views that can be taken when there is a suspicion of the fractured neck of the femur? So, usually a standard hip x-ray examination, it includes anteroposterior view and a lateral view is to be taken most of the time. Ideally, the AP image should include both hips. So strictly speaking, it, it is a pelvic x-ray. The purpose of it is to allow the comparison of both hips. A lateral view may be opted sometimes in axial lateral images or frog leg lateral view that we will be discussing shortly. So the plain x-ray when we want it, usually it is the AP pelvis. And why pelvis is uh, written and described? Because the pelvic fractures can mimic the clinical features of the hip fracture. And as a clinician, as a surgeon, or as a student, we must exclude the pelvic fractures. So what are the required images? In the radiograph, it is AP pelvis and APN cross table lateral view. So what are the lateral view that is possible to take? And there are three described. One is the axial lateral image. Another one is the frog leg lateral image. And the third one is Lowenstein image. We'll see how to take and what is the technique and what are the advantages and disadvantages in each of them. So if you take the axial lateral image, it has got one great advantage that the affected hip, it remains in the same position. It is not usually disturbed at all. So when you take the axial lateral image, it is has got it has got a great advantage that they see the cursor this is the abnormal hip or the pathological or the fractured hip which remains in normal position it is not disturbed and the normal hip is bent and flexed and behind it comes the x-ray tube and the images are taken crossing this becomes a lateral view and actually we get the full view of the neck in the lateral image. The frog lateral is on the contrary the pathological hip is positioned in the flexion and abduction and the view which comes it is the image that we can see the lateral view. So problem with this view is a multiple one. One is that it is important not to make a frog leg lateral image. Frog leg lateral image because we are moving the pathological or the fractured hip. And if we disturb by flexing or abducting the hip, it may create problem that fracture may be complicated. How it can be and what could be the result? So the result could be an undisplaced fracture may be displaced and un an impacted fracture can be disimpacted and create problem for the treatment. So we want to know the garden classification also when we take an x-ray. 
Now, types of the fracture determines the blood supply of the head, and that is a tricky question, and that is really a problem in the management of the fractured neck of the femur. If that goes off, then it will go for the avascular necrosis. Remember, the classification based on the site or anatomical classification is mainly telling us about the vascularity of the head of the femur. There could be a subcapital fracture where it is very close to the head, the neck is fractured, or the fracture is at the junction of head and the neck of the femur. Transcervical means somewhere in the mid portion of the femoral neck. And BC cervical, the base of the femoral neck is fractured. So remember the subcapital and transcervical fractures are truly intracapsular fractures, while there is a disagreement in the literature as to basic cervical fractures are intracapsular or extracapsular. And if they are extracapsular, should they be treated like the trochanteric fractures? There is a Delbert classification which correlates with the risk of the AVN, and it is the same one. It could be transphysial, means 90% risk of the AVN. The type 2 is subcapital, 50% risk that we have seen in the subcapital 1. Type 3, basi cervical or trans cervical, 25% risk of the AVN is still remains. Whereas in intertrochantric, which is truly extracapsular, very minimum risk of AVN is there. What would be the classical radiological features in the case of the neck of the femur or else what we should be looking for and how to describe? The first we must ascertain the view of the x-ray and the part x-ray. One by one we will be clarifying it. The identify the fracture and its location. Then we have to understand and clarify whether the fracture is complete or incomplete. And if it is complete, whether it is displaced or undisplaced. Central line is seen and usually it will be disturbed in the displaced fracture neck of the femur. Neck shaft angle is usually seen in the case of basal type of the fractures, which is uh, very similar to the trochanteric fractures. But the lesser trochanteric is usually more prominent, and the reason is because the limb is in external rotation. There is usually sclerosis in the fracture line, which is called smudgy sclerosis from impaction or blood or is smeared on the surface, it becomes. The bone trabeculae are angulated in some of the conditions we will be describing later. And there is usually upward shift or upward migration of the trochanter or the lesser trochanter. And there is shortened neck. It is due to the overlapping of the fragments and the type of the fracture usually we must ascertain on the basis of garden classification or anatomical classification. That is usually the way we describe. So this is the x-ray and how to describe. So first one and two, the part x-ray views and identification of the fracture is important. So here, views of the X-ray part, X-ray and its side, it is a must even in AP view. So this is the X-ray of the pelvis, including both hips. This is how we start our uh, reading the X-rays. How to identify the fracture and its location? So we can identify there is a fracture neck of the femur on the right side. Now, third one is whether complete or incomplete or displaced or undisplaced. 
So here the fracture is complete and it is displaced. So garden type, usually it could be the three or four, probably it is looking as grade four. But it doesn't matter in the final treatment because treatment of garden type three and four are usually the same. Now you have to identify again the fracture and its location and whether the fracture is incomplete or complete, undisplaced or displaced. So here it is a complete fracture is there and it is the basal type of the fracture. Here it is a transcervical fracture is seen on the right side of the hip. Here we can see it. The fracture is complete and it is subcapital fracture. Looks very clearly it is garden type 4. Again, the trans cervical fracture here and here this is subcapital femoral neck fracture. You can see it here. It is very close to the base. But this, so here the subcapital fracture of the right side. Again, right side subcapital fracture. Then we have to see the shental line. Shental line is to be clarified. It is in the inferior part of the superior pubic ramus, goes around and then becomes continuous with the inferior surface of the head and neck of the femur and it is continuous. So again, the same normal shentals line and here you can see it is broken. So shental line here is broken, that is a feature of the fracture neck of the femur. The next shaft angle, usually for the basal type of the fracture, it is usually in various deformity. So this is the normal neck shaft angle. You can see the cursor, this is the neck and this is the shaft longitudinal axis and this angle is different and see this is close to the 90 degree. So Usually we call the coxa varal valga, coxa valga more than 140 degree and coxa vara when it becomes less than 120 degree. Usually it is in between 125 to 135. Some books are writing 125 to 138, 39 as well. The lesser canter becomes more prominent and is due to the external rotation of the limb. So we can see it here, it has become more prominent compared to the other side. On the left side, it is more prominent and it is due to the external rotation. The bone trabeculi becomes angulated, especially in grade two and three, but sometimes in grade one when the impaction happens in the valgus position. So this also is possibility in grade one. So here, so it is grade one impacted and there is a different, this has become in valgus. And there is upward shift of the trochanter or the lesser trochanter that can be seen the on comparison on both sides. Here it is, it has gone up. This is the fracture side. Lesser trochanter also up compared to the normal side. The neck of the fracture, it is shortened. And here we can see the bone overlap. Now the question is, we are not able to understand the fracture is transcervical or it is basal. And why we are in problem is because the neck is not visible in its full length. So anatomical type of the classification is not possible in this case. How to classify it if it is not visible or the neck is not visible in its full length? 
Again, we can see it. And the neck is not visible in its full length. How to classify them? So we can see it. Femoral neck fracture on the right side and the whole neck is not visible. Appears that the head is so much close to the greater trochanter. So to classify it, we must have the option of getting an X-ray where the neck of the femur is fully visualized in whole of its length. And how to do that? The answer is very simple. So why it is not visualized, we understand because the femur is externally rotated and we want to visualize it fully, we have to take an X-ray of the hip with the limb in internal rotation. So this is how we do it. So you can see it when you take an X-ray of the hip in internal rotation, whole of the neck is visible. Head, neck and the tro greater trochanter. When it is in external rotation, neck becomes very short and or hardly visible. Head comes closer to the greater trochanter and the neck is overlapping on the greater trochanter. And this is how we can do it. The X-ray has been taken with the limb in internal rotation and we can see the whole of the neck of the femur. Again, whole of the neck of the femur when the limb is in internal rotation. And sometimes the lateral view, if possible, we take it and we can see it. There is a subcapital fracture here, but usually very difficult to take the lateral view. We have to give our opinion on the AP view most of the time and read the X-ray on AP view. So thank you very much for any queries. You can contact me on the mail given here. Thank you very much.